If you've been wanting a brand new car in the past year or two, it's been tough sledding. Low inventory, high prices, lack of rebates, and now we're fighting inflation as well as rising interest rates. But for this car supply shortage, the worst could be behind us. <laughs> We're over at Automotive News, Ford, Hyundai, Kia rack up double digit gains as markets rebound Toyota, Honda skid again. So what we're going to do is check out the sales numbers for the month of August for all the manufacturers reporting their numbers. So U.S. light vehicle deliveries rose 4.8% last month for said above the range forecast for the 3.6 to 4.6% gain. So we're going to talk about the general sales initially with this chart at Automotive News, and then we're going to break down a few of the manufacturers like Honda, Mazda, Subaru, and the Koreans to get an idea of where the market is heading. For some, it's heading up in the right direction. For some, it's not looking any better. Let's start with Ford at the top of the list here. Ford started seeing a rebound in the first half when we saw the July sales reports. And if you look at the August versus August, their numbers are up over 25%, 27.5% for Ford. Um, so they're only down point negative point one. So they're essentially flat on the year. It's, it's looking that they're going to finish the year strong here. So kudos to Ford doing what they need to do to get the production volume out there. Now, Lincoln, on the other hand, is seeing an uptick in luxury sales. Now, why it, why is this? Why? Well, Lincoln's products seem to have been a little bit better in their recent history. So that's helping their cause. But here's the thing, when it comes to luxury customers, they, they aren't as patient and they, they have the money to get what they want and they want it right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. So if you missed my video on talking about how the luxury market's loyalty is in the tank, meaning the buyers are gonna buy what's ever available as soon as it's available. Make sure to check that out, but that could be happening to Lincoln here. Uh, they're down 3.5% on the year, but it's it's turning in their favor here, obviously, with 24% up on the month of August. So Ford as a total, about flat versus last year, and up 27% uh, this past month, including Lincoln. Now, Acura and Honda, they're gonna be the first brand we dive into in detail today. Holy cow. <sighs> It's not getting much better. Honda down 36% in the month of August, which is slightly better than the total where they're at year over year at this point. Acura, it's not getting, it's actually getting worse, it looks like. They're down 43% on the year, but guess what? This past month, they were down 47%. Don't know what's going on. They need the chips, and they just don't have the chips to produce the vehicles they need. The demand is there, no doubt. I mean, look at this. They're selling half of the vehicles they did last month. I know that's what minus 47% looks like, but it's a little bit easier to put it in your head when you see 14,000 down to 7,000. And for the year, Honda down 40%. They are the most wildly affected by this ship, this chip shortage. And the, the recent news coming out of Japan, it's not official yet, but Honda looks to be shoring up two separate uh, supply chains, one for their Chinese production and one for their global production. And that should help, maybe not initial cost, but at least it'll be able to get them selling vehicles, which they're just not able to do right now in the volume that they desire. Now, Genesis, again, since Acura doesn't have the volume, Lexus doesn't have the volume, Genesis is seeing this as an opportunity as well as Lincoln we just mentioned. Um, so Genesis is coming in. It's a luxury brand out of Hyundai and they're kicking butt, taking names. They're up 22% on the year, but interestingly, they're only up 2.6% on the month. So what's going on here? Well, SUVs. SUVs weren't available entirely last year. Uh, so that's why we see the huge percentage jump uh, in year over year but it looks like SUVs were available beginning last summer. So that's why Genesis year over year or month over month isn't that much higher. So it looks like their, their momentum starting to stall out because they finally have saturated that market, initial market, I should say, for their products. Hyundai up 14.5%, taking big shots like Ford is, right? They're down only 11% on the year. Now looking at Kia, I have a Kia Sportage in the driveway hybrid. Very impressed for the amount of features you get for 33K. I can't wait to review that and give you guys like my surprising impressions on the Kia Sportage. I haven't tested out the new Sportage yet, so maybe that's why I'm so surprised on how 
pretty damn decent it is for a low price. But Kia up 22% on the month of August and only down 8% on the year. So they're faring a little bit better than their sister and brother brands. Now it's interesting, if we look at Hyundai brand, just Hyundai, not Genesis, 64,000. Kia is out selling them at 66,000. Interesting, right? And they're knocking on the doors of Honda and Honda just, they're down 40%. What are you going to do? So they might lose if the way things are looking, Honda stays down 30 to 40% and Hyundai and Kia keep rebounding. They're going to pass Honda here in North America, possibly for monthly sales, but it could be total sales as well when it's all said and done. We'll see. Mazda weathered 2020 and 2021 fairly well. 2022 hasn't been as kind to them. In the later half of 2021, they started falling from grace, essentially. But it looks like they're starting to rebound, only down about 7% on the month of August and down 23% on the entire year. So things are looking better for Mazda and Subaru. Subaru had a terrible 2021. They were like the laughing stock. That's Honda seemingly this year when it comes to production. Subaru is making the big turnaround here, but you have to keep in mind 2021 was so bad for them that these numbers are not where they want them to be. They've just kind of hit rock bottom, but it looks like they're starting to slowly crawl their way out being positive on the month of August. Lexus though, down 18% on the year and things are getting worse because they're down 20% on the month. Now there could be a couple things for this. New RX switching production, that's a thing. Um, they also have a new GX coming in 2024 for the 2024 model year so maybe buyers are waiting for that um, nx production might not be at the levels they need it to be that's probably almost a guarantee them not having an electrified option on the market is not helping the rz we really don't know when that vehicle is coming out production at the motomachi plant is in question with the wheels falling off the bz4x and solterra uh, toyota on the other hand looks looks like things are getting better for them what's interesting is that they're not prior prioritizing it for the lexus and but the argument there why lexus isn't doing as well is because the luxury brands have more technology bigger screens better safety and requiring more chips and that's not a good thing with the chip supply shortage so that's probably why toyota is able to pump out maybe a lot of low-tech models to saturate the market as best as possible in these crisis times toyota though down at about 10 percent on the month 18 percent as a total in the year including lexus volvo like i mentioned just drove the xc90 freaking love that car would i want to own it well it's really expensive but the plug-in hybrid is fantastic and the, the luxury on it is fantastic as well but maybe a good leasing vehicle because you guys kept mentioning the reliability of Volvo's not their strong suit lately that that wasn't always the case though but they've switched hands a few times if you know what I mean Volvo down though Volvo was surging in 2020-2021 down 24% on the month and 23% on the year that could have something maybe to do with the XC90 as they're switching over production to a new model here in South Carolina that's one of their big volume sellers it's hard to say but the ones reporting are down minus 0.2 percent let's just say it's down two percent so things are looking better as a whole which is an improvement from the negative 17 percent as a year so far so toyota isn't reporting but automotive news has like special ends so they have numbers here for certain toyota models so uh volume has dropped about 10 percent compared to last month sales are down eight percent that's a 13th straight monthly decline for toyota and the seventh for lexus and monthly volume that's not good camry is down 5.7 percent corolla is down 20 percent remember they're switching to the refreshed model so that could be a reason why a highlander down 24 percent again switching to a refreshed 2023 model so that's probably the reason why rav4 not a ton of changes they are kind of refreshing um the mid and the technology in there but not major changes like an engine change on the highlander and corolla for example on the tacoma kind of long in the tooth and it doesn't require like any updates up 11 percent Okay, we know Honda as a whole, including Acura, is down about 40%. The Accord, as we get ready for a redesign, is down 32% on the year. Civic down 56%. Clarity, rest in peace. Insight, rest in peace. Now, do we see any recovery here for these vehicles month, month over month versus year over year? 
The Civic, absolutely not. The Civic is worse this month than it has been the, the previous few months. Accord seems to be getting a little bit better. CRV seems to improving a little bit, but we're switching over to a new model. So that could go back down into the dumps in terms of production volume. HRV uh, down 9.7% on the year, but they just switched to a new model that shares a lot with the Accord, or sorry, the Civic that is down 67%. So expect the HRV to be continue to be down, even though it's produced in the Salaya plant in Mexico, maybe slightly different supply chain, doesn't matter. They can't get enough parts to produce that vehicle. Odyssey down 57%, which is congruent with where they've been the entire year. Passport, same thing, 24% down the entire year. Pilot is seeing a little bit of a resurgent here, resurgence here, but it's not good. Ridgeline up 200% and it's pretty much break even over the year. So the Ridgeline, they're able to pump out some models here, but the Ridgeline volume is very, very low historically, but man, it looks like they're allocating chips or something, or maybe the Ridgeline is just more of a basic model. They don't like the Odyssey's high tech for a minivan, right? So I don't know what's going on there, but they're able to pump out the volume for the ridge line. That is the big outlier here. Looking at Acura down 43% as a total. Well, of course, the ILX is going to be down as they switched over to the Integra. So the Integra has sold uh, about 5,000, 4,500 units so far this year. But if you compare it to where they sold the ILX last year, year to date, that was 11,000 units. So they're just not, they're like less than half of where they need to be in order to get that sales volume up. NSX, rest in peace, RL, RLX, rest in peace. They've sold three of them this year. Rest in peace, legend, right? TLX down nearly 80%. How? What is happening? TLX down 80%, 78.3% on the month and down 59% on the year. Holy mackerel. MDX down 27% and RDX down 66%. Guys, the crossovers are their volume sellers. And they're just not able to make them. Acura in the dumps. They can't make the models. And I just went to New York to talk about their Precision EV concept. And that was fun. It was a great time. First time in New York. And the concept is stunning when you see it in person. I don't believe images and videos do justice to it. But it was super cool. And I really enjoyed that experience. And I'm excited for Acura as a brand. Especially with the new battery announcement for Honda. Uh, and we know that the Lyric will become the ZDX in some shape or form, right? Essentially. Uh, so they have things going for them. Just doesn't feel like it right now because they can't make any models. So let's go from bad from Honda and Acura to probably bad as well with Mazda here. So Mazda down 23% on the year, down 6.7% on the month. So things are turning around for the tiny Japanese brand out of Hiroshima. CX-30 had the best August ever, so I guess that's a bright spot for the brand, but that's the sales highlights. So they have one bullet point for the highlights and that's the CX-30. All right, let's check out Mazda sales. We have month to date column on the left, year to date column on the right. So I wanna focus on year over year change on both year to date and month to date. I think that's going to be the biggest teller for us. So. Mazda 3 down about 15%, which is an improvement of where it's been about down 35%. Mazda 6 rest in peace, MX-5 down 15%, but it was down 57% before that. So MX-5 is seeing a rebound as well. CX-30 up 8.5%, whereas it's down 26%. So a big turnaround of the CX-30, which is the only major bright spot on the lineup for Mazda. CX-5 down 16% which is about where it's been this past year. CX-9 down 11%, and that's a little bit better at than the 22% this past year. Overall, Mazda making a nice comeback here. Subaru went positive for the month of August, but you gotta remember, like I said, the entire 2021 was a crap show for Subaru. So they've kind of, they've essentially just bottomed out and they can't go any lower. That's what's going on here. But where are we seeing the most of this recovery? Well, BRZ, but those sales are a drop in the bucket, right? 2,200 sales, essentially. The Ascent is up it's about 6%. Crosstrek is seeing a big resurgence here, up 30% on the month. But 
we're getting ready for a new Crosstrek redesign. So we'll see how that would affect sales. I just realized that the blinds were literally blinding the camera. So I'll close that down for you guys. That should be better. Orister, starting to see somewhat of, of an improvement here over the 43% it was down. Impreza seeing some good numbers here. Legacy down, they should just kill the legacy. Outback down, that's unfortunate. That's one of their volume sellers. WRX doing okay, but they didn't have a lot of WRXs at the end of last year, I don't believe, as they got ready for the redesign. But overall, Subaru is starting to see a little bit of a recovery because they couldn't drop any lower from where they were. Hyundai and Kia, though, we know they're killing it. Uh, Hyundai's retail sales up 24%, an all-time August retail sales record. Best all-time total retail sales for Elantra Hybrid, which I haven't driven yet. I'd really like to drive that vehicle. Let's see how it compares to the, the Corolla Hybrid, for example. So the Accent has seen a big recovery here, but wasn't the Accent canceled? I'm almost positive the Accent was canceled, so they're just kind of getting rid of the inventory on that model. Elantra up 30% on the month and 9% on the year. Ionic 5 has sold 17,000 units so far this year. Not too bad. Kona sales. Wow. Kona is a huge volume seller for, well, the segment, the, the small compact crossover segment is massive. So that's unfortunate they're not able to meet the demand here. And that's where Honda's HRV sales just skyrocketed last year uh, with the outgoing generation. But with the new generation, they, they're kind of in the dumps again with production, unfortunately. Palisade has seen some strong sales numbers still, of course. Santa Cruz up massively, but it was, I think it was July last year that they just started selling the vehicle. So no, no surprise there. So that's just kind of an outlier. Santa Fe up 32% on the month, down 5% on the year. So the Santa Fe making a huge comeback. Sonata, they don't really care about. They're letting that vehicle kind of wither and die and focusing those chips on more profit raising vehicles like the santa fe for example tucson as well big profit vehicles super competitive segment tucson up 28 percent on the month and 26 percent on the year veloster well yeah outlier rest in peace veloster and hyundai venue the tiny little compact crossover thing which is kind of the same segment as the Kona, uh, but the venue up 67 percent on the month and nine percent on the year so we're seeing some big revivals of some models here venue Tucson, uh, Santa Fe, Santa Cruz, Elantra, and yeah, it's looking good for Hyundai right now. The majority of their models are seeing a big comeback this uh, this past August versus last August. We're going to look at Kia here. Do they have any big bullet points here? Well, they yes, they unveiled the Kia EV6 GT, but in terms of sales volume, August sales increased 22% year over year with electrified models up 151%. The Sportage is up 59% increase year over year. I can see why now that I have the new Sportage in my driveway versus the last Sportage, which is a grandma machine. Sales of the Sorento SUV increased by 114% year over year. Sorento's kicking ass too. And Telluride with the new refresh coming in as well, up 18% year over year. Unfortunately, Kia doesn't give us percentages other than in the original briefing we talked about ahead. So we're gonna look at the month of August to see which models are seeing the, the biggest recovery here. Rio's up just slightly. Forte's up a few thousand units. Uh, K5 is down, but we see but we see Hyundai not prioritizing the Sonata. So uh, no surprise, Kia is doing the same thing here to put those chips on more profit raising vehicles. Stinger pretty much rests in peace at this point. I think this Stinger is all but confirmed to be canceled as they make way for other electrified options coming out of Korea. The Soul is losing some soul here. They just had a refresh, but wasn't exciting. They killed the turbo model. Uh, Nero, yes, the, the Nero's in the dumps because they're getting ready for the 2023 model, which is a complete redesign. Seltos is seeing a somewhat of a recovery here. So if we look 4,600 units and we look at the, the Kona, which is a similar model, um, 3,300 units. So Kia is doing a little bit better to preserve that compact crossover. But you got to keep in mind, Hyundai also has the venue in that tiny segment as well. Sportage up and absolutely killing it. Up massive versus last August. Sorento has doubled the sales versus last August. And Telluride up about 1,300 units. So, uh, well, in the Carnival, unfortunately, minivans, they just have so much tech in them. It doesn't seem like the manufacturers are able to pr produce them at the volume that they would like. So here we go. Kia, Hyundai, 
kicking ass, taking names. Mazda starting to see some recovery. Subaru is seeing in recovery. Honda is not. Toyota is maybe not as well. So it's really interesting to see where the market, sorry, is going to be for the next, I should say the last quarter of 2022. Are we going to continue to see some rebounds here from the automakers, especially Ford, which I don't really talk about on the channel. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you made it this far in the video, God bless you, because this is a long video that I do pretty much once a month to get you guys caught up on the sales figures. What is the most shocking thing to you? Is it like the TLX down nearly 80%? That's something I can't get out of my head right now. But I'll catch you guys in the comments below. Hit the like button, all that good stuff. Subscribe for more. Catch you in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful day and peace out.